Tim Huff is co-founder of the Hope Exchange Street Level Network and is directing community engagement for Street Level. Here's the logo. Just take a look. We want you all to be really familiar with this because it's going to be making tracks. It, here's what we need to see. We all belong. Not we can't, but we all belong belong. It's this man's heartbeat. It's the mission of the ministry. And he has certainly reached into our hearts with his two award-winning books, Bent Hope and Dancing with Dynamite. And it's exciting to see the doors that have been opening with the Children's Compassion Series. School children and educators have been looking into the cardboard shack beneath the bridge. The first book, Helping Children Understand Homelessness. And now, it's hard not to stare, helping children understand disabilities. Well, Tim, this has to have been a vision from God. It is going great places. It's been exciting. It's been uh, unexpected. I mean, the first children's book I wrote was basically for my own children who are now 16 and 20, but they were like, you know, eight and four and young ages. And just how did I speak to them about it? That's where it all started. Mm -hmm. Your personal involvement with the Bob Rumble School of the Deaf, their, their yeah. camp, their summer camp, that was a yeah, huge Yeah, the Bob impact. Rumble Association for the Deaf. So when I was 16, I started there, uh, just was playing in a band with Bob Rumble's son, ended up there and was just blown away by, the newness of it, in particular what they called special camp back then, which was children who were deaf, children, young adults who were deaf, plus they had another disability as well. Tremendous. Uh, doors opening, I see you're, you're speaking to a school board in January. Uh, you've been in schools and talking to kids. Uh, Rick Hansen has been on board with this. Well, yeah, well, basically one of the uh, schools um, that came to the launch he came to their school, Park Lawn, and uh, to their public school. And as a thank you to him, they presented him with uh, my book. <laughs> as a thank you to him, which was quite sweet. You know, I, sometimes my memory fails. I, I forgot that you were trained to do this kind of animation. You can illustrate your own books. Well, I went to... Uh, yeah, I started out going to taking the animation course at Sheridan, thinking yeah. I would end up working for Disney for a living, and... God had a different plan than that, clearly. Yeah. But it's fun to get to draw again, that's clearly for Clearly sure. planning. Okay, are we ready for a little story time? Who's going to help me? I'm going to start on this page because, oh, I do always still associate you with those dear folks on the street. And uh, here's what, obviously what Rightly this is so. about. So look with your eyes, but then do your part. Be kind with your questions. Look with your heart. And don't be afraid to wonder or ask if you can help with some simple task. Soon you will find it's not hard not to stare, but mostly you'll find it's hard not to care. That's really the message you want to get into every heart. Well, the books, the way they're framed are that they would have these illustrations that are quite, uh, you know, child-friendly but bold and, and explanatory and descriptive and some prose that are kind of like in rhyming that kids might be able to remember simply. But then if you go to the back, there's always a teacher's and discussion, uh, parents discussion guide. This is and what the school loves. They the love this. And this one is written by Jan Fukumoto, who she's not here with us this morning, but I have to give the, the right kudos. Um, she is the central coordinator of autism services for the Toronto District School Board. And she wrote and put together and she ran it through the mill of her contacts that work with other kids with exceptionalities and things like that. So there's a beautiful teachers and discussion guide that you can take the discussion much deeper, whether it's cerebral palsy or autism, blindness, deafness, there's some great content there. Mm -hmm. And all represented, yes, in the visuals. Beautifully done. I'm looking at an email you received. Actually, this is a Facebook message mm -hmm. uh, from a mother uh, who concludes, I pray that through your book, God would be able to raise up a generation of children who see them as people and not people of special needs. Right. Beautifully there have been Sad. so many uh, lovely messages that have come through like that. Just where something about some of the parents or the very people that are um, processing their own disabilities have contacted and said, it's just so great to hear someone just kind of get it and talk to it frankly and really get to the core of it and tell people we're more alike than different. It's been fun to follow your heart and your journey, Tim, from 
from light patrol right. for Christ for almost a quarter century. And then the Hope Exchange, at which morphed into Street Level. The Hope Exchange Street Level Network. There's correct. the but full, we go by Street Level, the yeah. The full name. Was this Compassion Series part of the vision? You know, the Compassion Series, like I said, started with my children just getting there. And it came to the next place through the Hope Exchange. And the one thing I tell my friends who have watched me in the last three, four years kind of go through the, down this path. Then we got to street level and the, the morphing to that, I thought this is the one consistent thing is that this compassion series for children, this idea that the next generation would come up and look through things through the lens of compassion became deeper and deeper within me. And then I got to that place where the anti-bullying conversation did not seem as right to me as the pro-compassion conversation. Oh. That that seemed like a small thing to call our children to. Now I'm for the anti-bullying stuff, don't get me wrong, but a higher vision seems pro-compassion. Yes. Not just that I would do no harm, but that I would come alongside. Not that I would just tolerate, doesn't say in scripture, new commandment I give unto you, that you tolerate one another, mm. but that you love one another love. as I have loved you. It's and lighting a candle, path. not cursing the darkness. It's basically. exactly it. Right. Beautiful, Tim. I, I just want to mention Pat Nixon's email, highlighting six out of 10 poverty workers in Canada are suffering from fatigue. And that's a big part of your mission, is to come alongside those caregivers. Yeah, so the Compassion Series is one of three parts of what we do, and the real um, startup was for people that would suffer from compassion fatigue. And we were just looking at all the things that might be missed in the paradigm, having worked with people who live on the edges and on the streets and places like that. One of them is to raise up this generation, but of course that's part two. And if you want to go to streetlevel.ca, you can find out what we do and how we need your support and to stand with us all the rest things. of the story. Well, I, you can see um, that the uh, forward is by the Honorable David C. Onley, our yes. Lieutenant Governor. And you know what? I, I didn't even think until I started reading, oh, he has a very vested interest in this mission. And uh, here's part of what he says, a remarkable contribution to the dialogue that is taking us closer and closer to being a fully accessible society. People with a whole range of disabilities are portrayed as fully functioning members of society who are only really handicapped if other people judge them negatively. Wonderful word. Beautiful. Wonderful endorsement. And uh, what a wonderful outreach to our children who need to have this heart of compassion. Tim, thank you. I don't know how long this series is going to go. It's book two. How many are we going to look I forward to? I can tell you real quick. The next book is uh, about First Nations truths, and I'm writing it in conjunction with Cheryl Bear, one of the great teacher speakers on First Nations across North America. Okay, so well, always something third. to look forward to with Tim. <laughs> Hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. And you know, several years ago, I read this lovely prayer in a tea room in Williams Lake, British Columbia. It said, give me the ability to see good things in unexpected places and talents in unexpected people and give me the grace to tell them so. Let's start today.